Well, I guess if you're watching this, you'll be very familiar with modern day cameras where you've got HD recording onto ABC HD um, onto memory. Now, in the old days, we used to use something that was um, a bit like this, a bit similar to a house brick, weighs nearly the same as a house brick, um, and recorded onto tape like this. Long gone are the days when I had a computer that would take the analog inputs. So I no longer have any method of converting this into a digital format for editing down. So what I've done, I've been out and bought myself uh, a fairly cheap system, which it's a platinum kit, which has got all sorts of software, editing software and DVD creation software in it. Um, I don't need that because I've already got all that kit built into my, uh, my desktop computer behind me. What I want is this bit here, which is the D to A converter, or the A to D converter, the analog to digital converter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to unpack this and we'll go through it step by step and you can see how successful I am at being able to convert my tapes into a digital format. Now I know that this runs particularly well on XP, uh, but I'm also aware that people have had a lot of trouble trying to run it on Vista. Um, it isn't capable of going beyond Vista as far as I'm aware. Right now I'm running this on a laptop which is running uh, Microsoft Windows XP. It's a professional version but it's at Service Pack 3. So this should be absolutely ideal for running this software. Now looking around the internet, typical price for this is about £69. I've just managed to get myself a good deal at PC World for £29, nearly £30. So what we'll do, we'll open it up and we'll have a look see what's inside. CD, instructions, and something that looks as though I should be blowing into it. A big ticket on here which says install software first. So let's have a quick read of the instructions and install the software. Well as you can see from this installer menu we don't get much choice. Um, we can install Studio 14 and we can install a labeler. We certainly don't want the labeler, but who knows what we'll get when we install Studio 14. Let's go for it. Pinnacle Studio has detected that Microsoft Windows Installer 4.5 is not on your computer. If a restart is requested by Microsoft Studio, installation will continue after restart. Click OK to install this required update. This might take a few minutes. So we'll cut to the chase. Right, it now says the installation of Microsoft Windows Installer 4.5 requires a system restart. You will be prompted to continue the studio installation after your system has restarted. Click OK to restart. Right, we've restarted now and it says uh, click OK to continue with the installation. OK, 20 minutes has passed and at last we have got the software installed which is Pinnacle Studio version 14. Now I've done two things. First of all um, I've already, while I've been waiting, I've created a, a directory inside my my documents, my videos. I've created a directory called Dazzle Clips so that I'm ready to input any successful clips that I can capture from my camera. Now although I haven't been instructed by the software at any stage, I know that it's very likely that before I start this software up, I'm going to have to plug my Dazzle unit in. So I've already plugged it into the side of the laptop there, and now I'm going to connect up the camera, which is sitting on its docking station. Um, I'm going to connect that up to this Dazzle unit. Now what I've got, I'm going to put the white cable into the white socket, and the red cable, both of which are audio cables and I could connect the yellow socket with the yellow cable. 
but from several years ago I've managed to dig up an old S video cable. Now the S video preserves the quality of the video better than this composite video that goes in here. So what I'm going to do is connect the S video cable up to the docking station as well. So I've got my left and right channels and my video now connected into the Dazzle unit. We'll start the software off and see what happens. We'll just zoom in so that you can see what's going on. Now it obviously defaults to capturing into some or to showing you some sort of default directory because it's got my videos up here and sure enough Dazzle Clips is waiting there for me. So what I should be able to do is go to Dazzle Clips, click click and open it and there's nothing in there which is fine because I've captured nothing at the moment. Okay now across the top of the screen here we've got three options. We've got one import, two edit and three make movie. Well I'm not interested in either editing or making a movie all I want to do is import some clips. So let's press the button and see where we go from here. Import. Okay well the good news is it's recognized the Dazzle DVC 100 which is this import unit and it's looking good so down here we've got a button that says start capture so let's do play on my video recorder and lo and behold it's working start capture and down here it's displaying how much time has been recorded well that's 30 seconds of Christmas mayhem many years ago and that's enough thank you so we now press stop capture now the video hasn't stopped but the capture has so we stop the video separately we'll go and have a look in the file menu to see whether or not we can see what we've captured it says here import to C documents my videos etc so that's obviously where the default setting has come from so what I'm going to do is now close the capture application the clips that I've captured are ready for dragging down onto the timeline and editing but I'm not going to do that as I said that's something if you wish to use this software go ahead um, I don't think it's a very good quality piece of software um, I've got my own software sitting up behind us here um, and I shall go ahead and use that shortly but what I'm going to do in the first instance is click get out of this piece of software go and have a quick explore my documents my videos dazzle clips not there so it's sitting down here at the moment under something called capture AVI I can see it sitting there so I haven't set and configured for that file to go into here. That doesn't worry me at the moment because I can capture, I can pick them up wherever they are. But let's just see what that clip is like when I try and play it. I'm now going to play it in Media Player. And that plays perfectly well. So we stop that. And then we will basically transfer this across to my proper editing suite and we'll take a look at how it runs in the editing suite to make sure that it's okay. It should be perfectly okay because it's an AVI file. I'm now running my Sony Vegas Pro editing software and I've loaded the clip that I've just made into it and dragged it down onto the timeline and over here in the preview window we can watch what the clip is doing. And there we go. It's working perfectly okay. It tells me that the quality of the clip is 720 by 576, 25 frames a second, which is as good a quality as I'm going to get out of a, an old uh, 8mm video. Having done some research before we started, um, I was a little bit reluctant and reticent to purchase this because there had been quite a few negative comments as well as some people that were very very pleased with it. The major problem with tape video is that the capture process is one for one i.e. it takes one hour 
to capture one hour of video. Whereas with modern cameras, you just have to do a file transfer and you can capture an hour of video in a few minutes. But at the end of the day, I think it's £30 very well spent. You've been along with me for the ride and you've seen just how successful this piece of kit has been. It's been simple to install, very simple to use. The only thing that we haven't experimented with is file names and I notice they come out with just capture.avi. Now I shall have to do a little bit more reading because I can't be capturing files on top of files on top of files so there's got to be some sort of file naming protocol somewhere which I shall have to do a little bit more investigation on. But that's something for you and me if you buy one um, to find out. So good luck if you're going to follow the same path as me and I hope you have as much success as I do. Thanks for your time.